Hello. So uh, it's very it, it's very weird to be here because like last time that I was at university talking with people, I think it was uh, seven years ago. So I suddenly feel very old. But however, today we are not here to talk about me, but to talk about uh, NLP and how you can uh, craft your own NLP potion. So today uh, we can say that there are two protagonists. The one is NLP, natural language processing, and the other one is you. Why I say this? Because basically this talk is entirely dedicated to you. Uh, what I want for you for today is to have some solutions, some ideas, no matter what is your role, uh, your level, um, if you can code or if you are, um, if you are still learning about coding. So this will be really um, an exciting journey through NLP and it's a very inclusive journey for everybody. Uh, just two words about me. So I am uh, Stefania Pecore. I, I come from Italy. I'm an NLP consultant here in uh, Canada. I also a senior, I'm a, also a senior data scientist in the video game industry. I'm very engaged in the community. Uh, I'm a woman, I'm a proud women tech maker and also women in AI and women in games. And I can say that um, I'm a PhD in NLP. I know uh, a little bit the, the academic setting. And one thing that I've always noticed is that there is a lot of innovation, a lot of ideas, research, but sometimes when you go to the business side of the world, you don't see uh, this part of uh, technology, innovation and research. So my goal, my passion, is more than really a goal, is my passion, is to find solution that can be that bridge uh, between the research uh, and academy and the business side of things. So uh, something that can work um, with the resources that sometimes you have in a company, with the people involved inside and the task that you need to solve. So NLP, what's this? As you can see from uh, this image, we have three arrows. And these three arrows are the entry point for the magic of the NLP world. So first of all, we have computer science. Programmers, developers, you are welcome to join because we always need people that uh, are really good in writing code and understand how to optimize the code. Second, the world of AI. This includes data scientists, um, people with mathematical background, uh, statisticians, but also people with a passion for machine and deep learning. And then there is the third, uh, which is basically people from humanities. Um, this is something that I really uh, love uh, as a special place in my heart because this was my entry point for NLP. Uh, my background is in, human, in humanities, in foreign languages and literature. And honestly, we cannot do a good NLP if we cannot understand the languages and the cultures that will use the NLP tools, that will perceive also these NLP tools, but also for shaping the languages. We need to understand that part uh, of the knowledge, of the human knowledge. So as you can see, you have different uh, entry points. These are the main ones, but they are not the only ones, of course. So where and who can use NFP today? Spoiler, you and almost everywhere. So uh, during my career, what I saw is that um, there are some patterns. So there are people that want to know more about other people, about opinions, how the, their brand is perceived, or how uh, the product are perceived. Then there are people that receive a lot of data, they are different, and they want to understand, okay, how can I take the information from this data and then use it to improve uh, my product or to understand what is my audience. And at the same time, we have people that have a lot of data of the same type, but again, even if of, of the same type, it's a lot of data. It's not possible to go 
uh, through it manually. So what they want to do is basically trying to understand how the reality is through the data. They want to, no matter what is the role, I worked with all these type of roles. They're trying to understand, okay, I have a lot of data and I want to get clarity to explain, but also to be inspired. Because uh, sometimes from the data, we can get ideas that we never thought before. So NLP can help uh, do this. And we also see that NLP can also Im Im help support people in their daily job in order to increase the productivity. Why I say this? Because there was a recent study that basically um, saw the behavior or, of consultants using NLP, using AI devices, and they had different levels of, uh, uh, pr of, of, produ of performances. So there were people above and uh, below the average, but in any case, they had a boost. So we can say that if we use NLP, or any other AI tool in a way that is aware and that we are present, so not as a uh, pilot, as an autopilot, NLP and AI can help us in our daily life. So we we'll just bring. Um, why awareness is, however, important? This is something that I would like to highlight because it's something that. Um, I face almost in every new project. So uh, there are a lot of misconceptions about uh, NLP and about uh, AI uh, from people thinking that they will lose their jobs or people that think that, okay, I don't need to like uh, think anymore about uh, some task because I, I will have, uh, for example, chat GPT that can do it for me and so on. So. For me, there is a threshold between uh, using NLP as a tool, which is something that I like. I agree 100%, and we, we are lucky to, to have right now those tools. And the fact that we will not use our human critical thinking to make our choice. So uh, I think this is my second mission, is okay, we, we will find solutions, but you need to be the, the people that can understand the solution and you need to use it and not be substituted by those solutions. So, now I will talk about some real world scenarios that I had the chance to work with. So uh, I will present you some use cases. These use cases will involve uh, the use of code. So it will be more related to people that can already develop uh, some code, but I will also offer you some solution that doesn't require really um, uh, to code. I will show you also some results uh, and the resources involved. By the way, at the end of the, of the talk, I created a slide where I list the majority of uh, res the resources that I used so that you can really um, take a picture and if you want to uh, know more or learn, you have a lot of resources from that slide. So some buzzwords, I know that from the talk that was uh, before mine, you already know from that, but so the subject will be uh, NLP and uh, LLM, so large language models, all these uh, models that have been pre-trained by a company that have a lot of computational power uh, in most cases, our interface to these models will be the prompt. So basically we will kind of talk with these models to obtain what we want to hear from them. We, as a video games, we can equip ourselves, uh, or better, the models uh, with some modifiers, some mods, uh, that is the, fi the fine tuning, but we have also other technologies that we can use. Uh, so I mostly use Hugging Face as resources, but there are also other type of resources, but this is really my source in terms of models. We will see models such as text generation, text to image, a different task. So from summarization to entity extraction, but also how to create your labels 
your customized labels for your um, to summarize to understand better the distribution of the, the labels inside your documents. However, today, since it will require a lot of time, I will not cover how it is done, uh, how we can build a transformer from scratch, uh, what are the last function, the code implementation, and uh, everything that is more on the opener or operational side of the machine learning, so how to evaluate a model, how to monitoring, and how to deploy. But I'm really happy to talk about this with you uh, after the talk. So, um, we have uh, generally two situations. Uh, we have uh, the context where you are free to use what you want. Uh, so, for example, you don't have constraints in terms of um, uh, legal constraints or data or also team constraints. So, we will see first this type of situation and then we will see how to create m a more private and a more custom solution. Uh, if you, for example, work in a company that for now is building the AI um, legal and infrastructure too. Again, first uh, example will be the artist. Like, since I work also in the, in the video game industry, I'm exposed to uh, different types of roles, so this is the first thing that I can think of. So sometimes when you are, you are an artist, you, need, you, you can receive a call from your director and he will tell you, hey, I need the sketches uh, for our project to be submitted to our, I don't know, investors, and I need them by this afternoon. So there is this poor uh, artist that, that, that is like, okay, I have only, I don't know, three, four hours to do the work. And uh, so why is he stressed? Um, it's like, okay, I would like to have a support because he has all the concepts in his, end, in his um, head, but he would like to have a support to do those sketches and maybe to be inspired also more in a short time. So why is good at evoking concept that refer to the styles that he knows, to the project that, that he knows, he would like to prototype rapidly those concepts in paper. So one thing that I proposed was basically, so we can take the artist concept as a keywords, and then with the help of a data science team, we can use um, a large language model that can be fine-tuned to generate prompt for another type of model that is a model that use prompt okay, to uh, generate images. And at the end, we should have uh, the concept of the artist into different images. There is also one thing, basically, that, that we can do uh, if uh, we, we, go to, we want to do more than this, if we have already a subject, uh, we can basically try to uh, use that subject and only change uh, what is not the subject. So the background, the objects that is taken in, in his hands, and so on. So there is, a, uh, the, there is Dreambook from, from Google that can be used. So basically we can uh, reuse the subject without changing uh, from images to images. And everything that you see is basically done with LLM. You can do it, for example, with uh, uh, Llama 2, and it is open source. Solution that, is that don't require really a, a data science team, however, you can use some tools that are uh, on the internet, uh, some application of web user interface that can transform your concept into images. So these are some of the tools and you have also Google Imaging. Um, they are really, you, um, you can use it easily even if you are new to the AI world because they are very intuitive. Other case that I saw, uh, executives, uh, managers, and so on. So they have a lot of data in their hand. They receive a lot of information every day. 
and their job is basically to um, transform all that data in uh, sort of uh, summaries and actionable uh, insights that then can, can use to take some decisions. And those decisions should be always data-driven. So they are very good at being specific in their request. They know what is the vision of the company, the direction, what they can, can do and what they cannot do. However, they receive a lot of data. So sometimes they really need to have all this data summarized. So also in, in this case, we can uh, help them. So you can imagine this is a document. You can, so you can see this also as a set of documents. The red lines are the most important lines to retain. So we have two choices. We can just extract those lines directly from the text and then uh, give them back to the executive. Or there is another solution. We can, again, extract those lines, but then we can reshape it, re uh, recreate a summary from those lines, so generate a text from those lines. So in the first case, we have something that is called the extractive summarization. So uh, for example, BERT can be used to do that. In the second case, you have the abstractive summarization. Why we, we say abstractive? It's because you, don't, you, you have two phases. The first phase will be trying to understand from that text what are the most important uh, part that needs to be extracted. And then there is a part of generation where you need to create your uh, text uh, from scratch. And of course, the abstractive uh, su summarization usually is like more complex because it involved a part of text generation. And also in this case, you have a lot of uh, models that can be, um, can be used, such as Pegasus and T5, but also BART. Then there is a uh, other solution that you can use if you don't want uh, to deal with code. So ChatGPT is one of the solutions. Um, and then there is uh, BARD. Of course, uh, the thing that will change is that when you don't use uh, something that is coded inside in, in house, you will have some limitation in terms of what you can uh, um, expose that model to and how long, uh, uh, you cannot customize basically the reply. <coughs> you will use a model that has been really built by other people. However, it can help. Students. So students need to learn different stuff while they are also preparing to have the first job or a new job. And uh, they want to improve the skills. They want to learn more. They want also to choose the right words uh, for uh, their cover letter or for their presentation and so on. So they are very good at learning, experimenting, searching around. However, they want to be challenged. At the same time, they want the solution. So uh, they want to learn and they want also to challenge the system to understand more and more what is happening around them and how can they, they can build the future. So um, some free resources that I was able to, to provide to these students. Again, uh, we have BARD, we have CHAT GPT. One thing that is very interesting is that uh, also universities are starting to build their own conversational AI to help, help students to understand the classes, to summarize the classes, and also to ask questions about the, the content of the class. So one example is uh, Jill Watson by IBM. Okay, now let's go to the uh, part that is Interesting as the first one, sometimes it's a hard path, uh, which are the customized options. So you can imagine you are working inside a company and uh, uh, you need a weather to find customized way to uh, not expose uh, the data or at least um, agree with some legal constraints that you can have. So we have also data that can be uh, 
sensitive. For example, uh, you are working in HR. You want to understand what are the motivators and the demotivators uh, for retention. You want to know why people are happy to work in this company and why people uh, are, are not happy anymore and we, we, we will not see them anymore. So uh, they need to find patterns, but they need also to preserve the anonymity and also they need to read a lot of data. Sometimes it's really decades, decades of data. Uh, they are very good at knowing the company, what is a good fit, uh, what are the facilitators that they can, uh, they can use inside the company policies, and also solve negative patterns. However, again, they are exposed to a lot of data. And uh, um, even if sometimes they have a lot of months to work on that, however, it can be overwhelming. So, in this case, the solution will be with a, a team of uh, machine learning experts behind. So it will require some code. But basically, the idea, uh, the idea is that we can uh, ask to the expert, in this case, the HR expert, to uh, create some labels that are based from their expertise. So these ba ba labels will be, for example, uh, labels of the motivators and the demotivators, such as uh, the salary perception, the team relation, uh, the desire for a new role, progression, and so on. So we will ask directly to the person, to the user, uh, what are these labels. And then we will have the documents, and we can see the documents uh, as a standalone or as a group of documents. Why I say this? Because as a standalone document, we can try to refine, the, to refine these labels and the distribution of these labels inside each document. So we can try to understand, okay, from the report that we received from an employee, what were the motivators at that time that worked, what, what were the demotivators, and what was the uh, distribution inside the text and that's why I also say that it's a more code-related uh, job because there will be also uh, some data science involved in that. And also, what is the percentage of uh, the labels that we created inside that specific document? But if we use the same um, models and architecture in uh, a group of documents, and over time, we can basically create a sort of time series where we know, for example, for a team, what happened, what were the motivators at the time, what was uh, the growth of, of the team, and what happened next. So we can really understand the health of the team and if we scale up, of course, of the company. So to do this, for example, I used uh, a model that is the model for natural language inference, such as the DiBerta model, but also the uh, T5XXL. And I think this is the last use case. So I am a developer. Not, not me, I'm not a developer, by the way. Uh, <laughs> so um, developers have... Uh, um, Honestly, they are great because they can write code, they can write very good code, at the same time they have to maintain it, they have to refactor it, and they have also to create the, the documentation. So it's a lot of work, and it's a lot of work, especially when you have also to onboard new people. Because however, they need to basically not only adhere to the, to the standard of the language that they are using, but also to the team, so to the team strategies and how they structure the code and what are all the formalities that usually they, they use. So why can we not use a LLM, first of all, to take the code that we have to extract the documentation and then, and then just refine it uh, with the expertise of the developer. So this is one thing that, that we can do. And the other is basically to fine tune the model in order to recreate portion of the code and to instruct the new person that is onboarding on how uh, some parts of, of the code can be, uh, should be written 
for, uh, for the team conventions. So to do so, there are, again, uh, right now we have a lot of LLM that are also specialized in understanding code. Uh, we have code uh, Llama, Star Corder, and we have also uh, stable code. And from OpenAI, we have also Codex. OpenAI is the one who created ChatGPT. So, conclusion. Things that you can try from today, uh, you can try to generate images from your ideas using a LLM. You can try to summarize your docs. So if you're a student, you can try to think about, um, for, for example, recently I helped a student that had to do a survey of, I think, 50 papers in uh, two weeks. They can try, however, to be helped using summarization tools to do that. This doesn't mean that they don't need to understand the paper and to uh, be able to replicate the experiments, of course. Again, for the critical thinking of, of the thing. Um, and uh, you can also use it to create bullet points. You can try to create uh, your own documentation for, from the code. Or, for example, you can try to understand the text in terms of distribution of uh, uh, topics inside the text, so using labels. If you start a journey on NLP, you will have a smooth part, especially today, because you have pre-trained model, you can play with them. When I started, I was uh, in the beautiful world of the bagel world. Uh, basically, a text was represented by one and zero, and it was very hard to uh, do all the connection in terms of semantics and, uh, and syntax. So right now, you have a very powerful model that can be used, you can play with it, and you can try also to, um, of course, not with all the, the pre-trained data that has been used, but you can try to create them from scratch. You can also customize those models uh, through the fine tuning and the RAG. I will uh, say just two words about that um, in the next slide. And you will have probably a lot of people that are enthusiastic to use these tools. They, they are curious. So I think right now uh, we are in a, a happy moment uh, about AI and NLP. There will be some struggles, however. Uh, you will have people that will be skeptical. It's totally normal. And uh, you will have people that have fear. So that's why it's important to, do, uh, to build uh, models and to use tools in a way that we can understand it and explain to people. And also, again, trying to use these tools with your head. So trying to be critical on what you're doing. And of course, the NLP part is just one piece of the puzzle. You need uh, people that will be, um, um, that will basically create the infrastructure behind the deployment part. And uh, we'll also study in terms of statistics, what is the best solution that you can build for uh, the issue that you are encountering. And of course, this means that you need to have sometimes tech people with you to have a complete uh, NLP system that can work. Bonus section. What if I want my own mod model and possibly for free? And when I say panic here is that every time that someone asks me this, it's like, okay, I'm scared. Because then sometimes they say, okay, I have only a CPU, or maybe I have only a GPU, and it's 10 years uh, old. I'm like, okay, thank you. Uh, very <laughs> easy for me to do stuff. Okay. Uh, so some consideration. Uh, this is always on the awareness part. Um, it's very good to be hyped, however, uh, we should not consider the models as smart as we say smart for a person. Models have seen a lot of connection between data points. So they are smart because they have a lot of experience behind, but they are not smart in the sense of uh, a person that, that is smart and can do anything he wants. LLM, since have, uh, they have seen a lot of data, they are for nature, uh, and by nature uh, they are generalist. So there are some things that we can do to uh, 
modify these models to our needs. Two techniques, fine tuning and uh, the retrieval augmented generation. So the difference is that for the fine tuning, you will modify really the model. Uh, you will have uh, some layer that will be modified for your goals. In the retrieval augmented uh, generation, you will, we can say you will use two systems together. One, it will be uh, the, in the information retrieval. So you can imagine as a sort of database. So it's your data that will be used with your LLM and that the LLM will use that data to shape the reply that you will have at the end. So there are, these are two different techniques. Um, sometimes people prefer one uh, or another. Sometimes they can also be used together. So it's depending basically on what you have and, and what are your goals and what resources you have. So for the fine tuning, you need labeled data. This means that you need people that know how to label the data. And uh, it's good because, because you can change the model behavior. And the only thing is that we can see some hallucination. This means the model will reply, but the reply will not be truthful 100%, or it will be wrong. This means that you should do the fine tuning with constant updates. They can be stressful. Uh, so it's not useful, f it's, not, uh, um, it's not a good fit for dynamic data. And the reasoning from the stakeholders usually is perceived as less transparent because the first question is like, okay, the data came from where? So uh, otherwise you can use the, uh, um, the RAG that basically will take your documents and will query the documents. So the first reply that you will have is from document. This means that the stakeholder, you will be able to understand, oh, okay, that part of the text that has been generated is effectively from my text, so I can trust this tool. And it's suitable for data that may change over time. So, what to do next? Take a picture, <laughs> please. These are uh, some of the resources that I use on a daily basis. So you have, of course, hacking phase, where you will find uh, almost any models that I cited, the open source one, the tutorials. You have also the papers with code, where you will have also the explanation on how those, cr those models have been created. And you can find also some information about the data behind. And then you have a lot of YouTube channels where you will have for different uh, point of view and also uh, skill level from uh, how to, in general, use uh, uh, LLM and to someone who will explain to you how to build from scratch a transformer or a GPT model. Next, this afternoon, I will be with other uh, experts in a tech panel that it will be on the Room B cloud. So you can ask a lot of questions. I hope to have all the answers, but I can try to find them in any case. And uh, I think that's it. If you want to add me on LinkedIn, you're welcome. And uh, thank you all. You are still here. <laughs> thank you.